Okay, good. We'll go ahead. Yeah, thanks for um, having me tonight. As I should say, it's already uh, July 14th over here in, in Germany. So I'm Carsten. I work at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Biology in northern Germany. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, genome annotations and knowledge graph construction in the case of uh, Pseudomonas fluorescence SPW25. So uh, this is the next slide is uh, my outline. So I will uh, briefly present what this model organism is, uh, Pseudomonas fluorescence SPW25. It's a model organism that we work with a lot in our microbial population biology department. Um, we recently uh, published a genome assembly and annotation update for this organism. And based on this new data, we constructed a knowledge graph that I'll uh, describe a, li a little bit in more, in more detail. Um, and what I also want to talk about is that we did our best to integrate um, or to, to connect this knowledge graph both to um, external data sources like uh, the Uniprot database, knowledge base, um, but also more generic data sources like uh, Wikidata, but also to, to our internal data sources. And um, I'm going to explain a bit about the background and our motivations to do that and, and how we did it. Um, so this is, uh, this, is, this, is, this is it. This is Pseudomonas fluorescence SPW25. Um, it main interest stems from the fact that it was shown to improve uh, plant resistance against fungi and other plant diseases um, a couple of uh, 30 years ago. Um, this special strain, SBW25, was actually isolated from sugar beet leaves um, in Oxford. It's a typical non-pathogenic rod-shaped flagellated bacterium, which today is widely used as a model organism in microbial population biology. And one reason to study or one interest to study is uh, that it forms these uh, fancy um, these fancy morphotypes that you see in the, in the, in the center of, of the slide. Um, and if you zoom further in, you, you see the, uh, under the microscope, you can see uh, individual bacteria. So as I said recently, uh, or originally, um, the, the genome and uh, the annotation comes from the Wellcome Sanger Institute. They, they assembled uh, the Sanger sequencing data back in 2009, also still pride themselves for having generated a manual um, annotation back in the days. And since then, there have been various uh, annotation updates. And the problem with these uh, annotation updates is that uh, they have been uh, produced by, by automatic annotation pipelines. And they partly overwrit the carefully curated manual annotations um, from the 2009 Sanger study. And uh, this created, in some cases, I'm not going to go into further details, but this really created misleading gene annotations in, in a couple of important cases. And uh, so we, we, um, what we did is, or one of our PhD students did this, she um, derived uh, long read PAC bio data. Uh, and an additional Illumina whole genome sequencing data set and hybridly uh, assembled a new, a new genome assembly, which is 99.5% um, identical to the original assembly. But then what we also did is uh, we manually merged this original manually curated uh, Sanger annotation from uh, 2009 with the more recent uh, automatically generated annotations such that newly um, identified features uh, in the genome as well as the uh, uh, carefully, um, careful, carefully curated manual annotation sort of are merged together and both available in, in, the, in the new data set. And uh, this data is now available on the, on the EBI uh, under the given uh, accession. So as I understand, um, often genome annotation work sort of stops there. Um, the assembly is done, the annotation is done, all is published, um, we can go to the next uh, organism. But sort of we see two major challenges uh, that we face now. Um, the one is that research on SBW25 continues and new knowledge will, will be uh, found and, and, and deposited somewhere. Um, so what we want to do is we want to facilitate some kind of collaborative maintenance of this uh, newly, uh, newly done uh, SBW25 genome. And in order to do this kind of collaborative uh, maintenance, we set up a uh, public SBW25 genome database, which on in addition to just providing the genome data and, and uh, the, the annotation, it's also possible to log into the system and, and upload and, and edit the, the, the available data and the results. 
of course, this brings up the question of how do we version and, and curate the data, and uh, this is also somehow a, a work in progress. Um, open questions, but um, another question that we think or want to deal with is that uh, we want to keep our annotation system in sync with uh, external databases like, as I mentioned, Uniprot or also more generic data, data sources like uh, Wikipedia or other um, uh, system, systematic uh, databases. But also, it should be possible that uh, knowledge that is generated in our internal data sources, I'm going to speak a bit, little bit more about what these are, um, to, that, that uh, data that is deposited, for example, in our electronic lab notebook systems, in our um, image databases, in our metadata catalogs, that also these data are accessible and findable in the, in the sense of fair data uh, from within our, our annotation uh, database. Um, and to this end, what we did is we additionally created a knowledge graph or a RDF document that basically is a translation of the annotation document to RDF, and we serve that through a SparkQL endpoint. And because SparkQL endpoints um, facilitate federated queries against other endpoints, we can now really reach out to both internal and external data sources that basically are also accessible through SparkQL endpoints. Um, for in-house relational databases, we had to go um, an additional step. We have to construct so-called virtual knowledge graphs, which are basically mappings from uh, relational databases to um, RDF uh, systems. So usually when I give such a talk, I have to explain what is all this uh, linked data technology. Here, it's probably sufficient to say that RDF is the resource description framework where data is modeled as triples. Triples form a graph and ontology defines uh, semantic relationships and SparkQL is the query language with which you can uh, actually query such a, uh, a data structure. And here's the big picture of our system. So at the center, you have this uh, PFLU SPW25 genome triple store, which is not much more than a, a rewrite of the, of the GFF3 file that we generated by merging these uh, various annotations together into an RDF format and serving it through a um, SparkQL endpoint. And then through federated queries, we can now reach out both to external data sources um, that also provide their data through a SparkQL endpoint and also to our internal sources, and most dominant, most, most, most prominently to the public uh, pseudomonas fluorescence SPW25 genome database. So this first part that I'm going to explain is this uh, public genome database. Here we use the so-called triple uh, framework. Triple is a basically a Drupal um, content management system sitting on a PostgreSQL relational database that implements the Chardo, uh, well-known Chardo biological database schema. Um, and then some, some add-ons make it basically a biological genome uh, front end. It features a genome browser, a search interface, and so you can basically enter your, your favorite uh, genomic feature and you get all the information that is in the database. On top, locked in users can also enrich the annotations or provide their own data and analysis. And quite importantly for us, um, there is a JSON API that allows programmatic access from uh, various compute uh, frameworks like RStudio, Jupyter, Galaxy, or you name it. And um, here's a screenshot of, of the front page of the system. It's already publicly available. So you have this typical uh, genome browser functionality. You can uh, click on, 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 on search, or you can log in if you are authenticated and then uh, enrich the data with your own um, uh, data. And here's a screenshot of um, this uh, web service that I mentioned. So basically, all the data is available as uh, linked data JSON in linked data JSON format. And uh, this, of course, immediately for us brought up the question if we can't basically piggyback on this uh, RDF-like data model that already is already represented inside this uh, triple system. And um, so to, to kind of serve the same data through a SparkQL endpoint, which, was of, which would, of course, greatly benefit our, our use case. Um, unfortunately, native solutions using various Drupal plugins uh, so far failed, and we had to resort to a more intermediate solution, which is uh, a, to construct a so-called virtual knowledge graph. I'm going to come back to this point, but before, I would like to um, explain also how we 
constructed this the central piece of our system, this uh, P3 SBW25 genome triple store. Um, for this, to this end, we um, defined a, a new ontology named the GFFO for genetic feature format ontology. Um, it's, I would say, very shallow. Let me let me explain what that means. It's basically a one-to-one -one mapping between the GFF3 terms to RDF objects and properties. And you you will probably uh, say that this sort of reinvents the wheel because all these uh, GFF3 terms, they are already defined in one or the other anthology and you're totally right. But what we also wanted to do is we wanted to provide a unique namespace for um, Spark UL queries. We don't want users that go to our endpoint um, to have having to memorize all the various uh, gene ontologies, uh, sequence ontologies, GFABO, and so on. But on the other hand, we um, backed up all our classes and properties by is defined by properties that point to these more established uh, public ontologies, like the sequence ontology, the genome uh, feature and variant ontology, and, and others. Um, here's a, a, an example of how uh, this looks like in our ontology document. And as I said, but in this way, we provide a, a unique uh, prefix and namespace instead of um, all these multiple prefixes. And the ontology is maintained um, in an open source fashion on, on GitHub. Um, next thing we did then is we connected um, uh, via Jupyter Notebook to our genome database. And using the, the JSON API, we then basically pulled all the content and information there is on each individual feature from the database, in particular the uh, internal uh, database IDs, so that we can cross-link between our knowledge graph and that uh, triple instance. Uh, and basically, then we iterated over all the 40,000 something uh, features in the annotation and expressed them uh, by uh, corresponding um, entities defined in the ontology through a, a RDF graph. And voila, then uh, we, we had our Spark UL endpoint, and um, you see a typical query for uh, subjects, predicates, and objects that basically list all the, um, all the triples there are in the database. And uh, the, 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 the subjects here, they link directly to the uh, triple instance to our genome uh, database. So that part is basically um, done. Next thing is that we wanted to be able to federative to, to perform federated queries to our genome database. And of course, Triple itself does not provide an, an Spark UL endpoint. So we had to basically uh, generate a mapping that maps our um, Spark UL queries first to SQL. These SQL queries are then submitted to the database. The SQL answer that comes back has to be translated back to RDF, and this is then uh, resubmitted to the originating uh, query uh, endpoint. Um, how does this work? Basically, um, a very naive way of mapping uh, SQL databases to uh, RDF is by saying, okay, each table in my database becomes a class. Each ID or first column ID becomes uh, an instance of this class and all the other column headers become properties and the values under these other column headers become the values or the, the objects. Uh, and uh, basically we uh, uh, did apply this kind of mapping scheme to our, to our uh, genome database um, using the onto uh, virtual knowledge graph construction uh, uh, tool. Uh, which is very easy to use. You basically directly by, by hooking up to your SQL database, you can derive such a bootstrapped ontology. The problem with such an ontology is that it's highly redundant. You see that here, for example, the feature, um, or actually on the next slide, uh, uh, DB crossref ID property, which is a column header in many, many tables in the SQL database, it's, it now becomes a property for each table uh, it, it appears in. So you have uh, multiple occurrences of these DB crossref IDs sitting on all the classes that um, basically uh, uh, link back to the, to, the, to the tables in the SQL databases. So a next step will be to clean up uh, and ha uh, harmonize this uh, bootstrap ontology to define a more um, uh, unified uh, ontology. Um, a last question is then um, 
how do we deal with external databases that or what, what I should maybe mention before is um, not only can we now interface our, our Denum database, but we can also interface or connect to our internal databases and web resources. And as I mentioned, these are, for example, an open BIS system for electronic lab notebooks and lab information management system. We are also connecting to our Omero image database and to our metadata repository that uh, is, is, is named Seek. And um, finally, we have this question of how do we deal with external resources that do neither provide a Spark UL endpoint or in, in, as in some cases is the case, uh, also do not provide a public API. So um, unfortunately, or fortunately, some of these uh, external databases that we're interested in, for example, the StringDB, do provide a public API that we then have to somehow um, map to our Spark UL queries. There are certain technologies out there that make this possible, and we're currently exploring some solutions. Unfortunately, pseudomonas.com, for example, which is, of course, for our case, a very valuable data resource, does not provide a Spark UL endpoint nor a, a public API. And um, what we experimented a little bit with is uh, web scraping, but of course, this is not nothing you would want in a uh, production system. So coming to a summary, we have published our genome, new genome assembly and annotation update for our model organism as a triple instance. It sits at this uh, web address, which is publicly accessible. And also, in addition, we publish it as a SparkQL endpoint, which um, makes possible federated queries against external endpoints, as well as internal resources by virtue of uh, these uh, mentioned virtual knowledge graph constructions. With that, um, yeah, I have some, some open issues. And one open issue that I want to mention is that we really would like to integrate our data into Wikidata, kind of the world's largest knowledge graph system. Uh, currently, if you go to Wikidata or Scholarly, which is basically the Scholarly uh, interface to, um, to Wikidata, you see empty, uh, empty pages for the genome and proteome information. And this, of course, has to change. And we would very much like to contribute to this uh, to this uh, endeavor. So finally, let me thank uh, my collaborators, in particular the various open source development and support teams at Omaro, Seek, OpenBIS, and, and Triple particularly. I would like to thank the, the conference organizers for giving me the chance to present my work here, uh, all but virtually. I would thank to, I have to thank my colleagues at MPI Evolutionary Biology, and finally, you for your uh, attention, and I'm very much looking forward to receive any questions and feedback you may have. Thank you very much.